Hi, I'm Steve from Amazon Web Services. In this short video, we're going to take a look at the new AWS tools for Visual Studio Team Services. The tools contain a set of tasks that you can use in build and release definitions in Visual Studio Team Services and on-premise Team Foundation server instances to work with AWS services including Amazon S3, Elastic Beanstalk, Code Deploy, Lambda, and CloudFormation. For example, we could use the task for Lambda to deploy a serverless application to AWS from within a build in our VSTS account. To get started, we go to the Visual Studio Marketplace and the homepage for the tools. You can see we have a summary of the tools and two options available to us. Clicking Download enables us to download the tools for installation into an on-premise Team Foundation server. I'm going to use my online Visual Studio Team Services account, so I'm going to click Install. A new window then appears for me to confirm the installation. Clicking Confirm starts the installation process, which takes a few seconds. And then the tools are ready for use. Now that we have the tools installed, let's see how to use them with a simple exercise. I'm going to take an existing project, an ASP.NET Core web application, and add a task to its build to upload the build artifacts to an S3 bucket to verify everything is working. So let's go to the dashboard for my project. And then from the welcome panel, I'm going to select the continuously integrate section. That will take me to the build definitions for the project. And you can see that currently, I don't have any builds. Let's fix that by clicking the Add New Definition button. There's a template available for our project type. So let's select that and click Apply. The template adds some default tasks to our build that we can see listed in the left panel. The first change I'm going to make is to set the default agent queue to hosted VS 2017, as this is an ASP.NET Core project. The rest of the tasks look great, except that we don't, for this demo, need to use the publish artifact task. So let's remove that from the build. Let's now add the task to send our build artifacts to S3. To do that, I'm going to click the Add Task button in the left panel. And then on the right-hand side, we can see a list of tasks that we can add to our build. Scrolling down, we can see the tasks from the AWS Tools extension. I'm going to select the AWS S3 Upload task and click Add to add it to the build. When we select the task, we can see it has a number of parameters that we need to complete. First, we need some credentials for AWS, so the task can make calls to S3 on our behalf. We can quickly add credentials from the task by clicking the plus button to the right of the field. The resulting dialog might look familiar if you use our toolkit for Visual Studio, or our PowerShell modules, or even our various language SDKs, which all use credential profiles to store credentials. In the SDKs and tools, a credential profile is used to associate a set of access and secret keys with a name. The name is then used to select those credentials for use. In the VSTS tools, the connection name field is the equivalent of the profile name. I'm going to enter some dummy credentials and click OK to save them and take us back to our task configuration. You can see that the credentials we entered have been automatically selected. As these were dummy values, however, I'm going to override and select my real credentials that were created earlier. Notice the gear icon to the right of the field. That takes me to a separate page where I can also create additional connections to hold AWS credentials. The next item for our task is to set the AWS region. I'm going to use a bucket that will be hosted in the US West 2 region. The final required setting that has no default value is the bucket name. I'm going to use the name to a bucket I've already created, steve-vsts-demo. The source folder is the folder on the build agent that contains the files we want to upload. In this demo, we're going to use a VSTS build variable that refers to the build staging directory. This is called build.artifact staging directory. Details of the build variables available to you can be found online in the Team Services documentation. The file name Patterns field enables you to specify one or more globbing patterns to select the content to be uploaded. The default value of star star will select all files in the selected source folder and its subfolders, which suits our purpose for this demo. Objects in S3 buckets are identified using a key. The S3 upload task will automatically use the file name, including by default the relative path from the source folder, as the object key. In addition, the task will upload to the root of the bucket by default. We can also elect to place the objects beneath an additional folder, which is known as a key prefix in S3, by entering a value into the target folder field. I'm going to use the project name as the key prefix, which I can obtain from the variable system.teamproject. And I'm going to add a build artifact suffix. I'm going to leave the objects private by default 
And since I know the bucket already exists, I'm going to leave the option to automatically create it unchecked. That's it. We're now ready to run our build, so let's click the Save and Queue option and get the build started. Clicking the link to the build, we can see the logging output as the build runs. But instead of waiting, let's go and take a quick look at the other tasks available from the tools. Back in the build definition page for my project, I'm going to click the Add Task button again and scroll through on the right hand side. You can see the AWS uh, tasks in here. So you can see there are tasks available to deploy an application to EC2 using either Code Deploy or Elastic Beanstalk. We can deploy a serverless application or a standalone function to Lambda. We can create, update, and delete CloudFormation stacks. We can also execute a change set to create or update a CloudFormation stack. We can download content from S3 in addition to upload as we, the task we just used. We can send a message to an SNS topic or an SQS queue. We can run a script that uses commandlets from the AWS Tools for Windows PowerShell module. And finally, we can run a command from the AWS CLI. Let's go back and see how our build is progressing. You can see we're at the .NET restore stage of the project build. We can see the build is now completed. And if we select the S3 upload task on the left, we can isolate the log output specific to the task. And we can see that a single zip file was uploaded to the bucket. To verify, let's switch away to a command prompt and use the get S3 object commandlet from the AWS PowerShell module to list the contents of the bucket and see our new zip file containing the built artifacts. As you can see, using the tools in your VSTS build and release definitions is super easy. Go to the Microsoft VSTS gallery, install the AWS tools, and start automating your deployment to AWS. Thanks for watching.